Welcome to Brad Owen Clips. This is brand new original content. I'm taking you behind the scenes of how I made Poker Vlog episode 232 for the main channel. Uh, a lot of you guys have reached out to me in the past and asked how I do certain things. So I take you step by step through it and uh, hopefully you'll have a greater appreciation for all the hard work that us poker vloggers put into each episode. I hope you enjoy it. Let's go ahead and get started. Have you ever considered making a poker vlog, or maybe just any YouTube video in general? Well today, I'm going to take you step by step through my process for making poker vlog episode 232 on my main channel called Brad Owen. Making weekly episodes may be more work than you realized, but documenting my life over the last 6 years has helped open doors to a lot of unique opportunities and has been a huge net positive overall. Perhaps after watching this, you may feel inspired to get creative yourself. Typically, I'll go into a poker session deciding beforehand that I'm going to be making a vlog out of it later, especially if it's a cash game session. When I first started, I used to have to sneak around with filming until I was eventually able to start getting permission once properties realized that I'm always trying my best to make them look good in order to provide value to them as well. There's usually enough going on during a poker session that's difficult to manage, but adding filming and diligent note taking can make it quite a bit tougher to play your best. Here's an example of the notes that I'll take during a normal cash game vlog. I try to input as many relevant details as I need to to create a proper episode, including my hand, starting position and stacks of all the players involved, betting amounts, and board runouts. For the video that we're going through today, I actually play a tournament on a live stream at PokerGo Studio and didn't take notes on my phone. After the session was complete, I asked Brent Hanks at PokerGo for the stream footage, which he was happy to send me. From there, I sorted through the footage that I captured on my phone to pick out which clips I'll be importing to the computer. I assemble all the footage to put it in the editing software that I use called Final Cut Pro that's available for Apple computers. There's a commonly used program for vloggers. Another one that's commonly used by a lot of creators is called Adobe Premiere for PCs. I have to intertwine my footage with the stream footage to create a fluid story that's entertaining. For this episode, there are over 100 images and videos I go through. This part isn't too difficult, but altogether it takes a few hours just to formulate and get a decent idea for what hands I want to discuss in the vlog. During this time, I'm also thinking about what I might want to say in the script. Once we have the clips in order, it's time to write the script, which for me is by far the most time consuming aspect of creating a poker vlog. Luckily, my cat Marvin is usually close by to keep me company. I start working Sunday morning on it, take a break to watch a Niners game, but overall, work 12 hours writing it before I'm done around 2 a.m. on Monday morning. This is going to be a particularly long episode as it's 13 pages single spaced. A typical video for me is usually anywhere from 7 to 10 pages single spaced. Normally I go back and forth between the footage and the notes that I took during the poker session to complete this task. I absolutely can't delegate anything so far up to this point, especially the script writing because no one but me knows what was happening in my head during these poker hands and the script is also where I can insert my personality and some stupid jokes that hopefully people will enjoy to break up the monotony of going through normal poker analysis that can sometimes be dry. On Monday morning, it's time to record the audio. I set up a mini studio in the closet to get optimal sound quality, and I use a Yeti mic. These aren't all that expensive. If you're interested in purchasing one, you can pick one up for around $100. I recently moved into a new house with my girlfriend and her two daughters. I assure you, those dresses you're seeing there aren't mine. Recording audio can be challenging, especially when it involves a long script like this one because I need to mitigate outside noises. I try to do this when the kids are at school and my girlfriend's out of the house as well. Even with all the necessary precautions, occasionally, other noises will either come through on the recording or distract me, causing some outtakes. It appears that there's an all-in and a call at the other table as well. Damn it. I think the cats are fighting on the stairs. After about two hours of recording around 70 to 100 takes, I send 31 separate rough recordings that still contain a few mess-ups, along with the script, to my brother Matt, will take them all and turn them into one seamless audio track without any mistakes. Right now, this is the only part of my process that I'm delegating. While he works on that, I finally get to take a break. And by that, I mean I start working on additional stuff. WPT scheduled me to be on Joe Ingram's podcast for a few hours to promote upcoming events. Then I meet my friend Spraggy for dinner at Javier's inside of Aria. I brought the chips that I won in the tournament we're making the vlog of right now with me to cash them out. It's my biggest ever tournament payout and win. At this point, we decide to head to Bellagio to play a poker session that I'll make a vlog of several weeks from now, once I finish all the other videos that I have in the pipeline first. We have a great night, but I play a 9 hour session and get home at 6am on Tuesday. I don't get much rest, but don't have a lot of time to get this vlog finished if I want to get it out by Thursday morning. We've got the audio from my brother, we 
we put it into Final Cut, then we start editing the video clips that we assembled to the audio track. This is when we start seeing all the work that we've done up to this point pay off a little. The video is beginning to resemble the final version of a finished poker vlog. I used to delegate from this part on to an editor, but it didn't really save me that much time because it would add extra steps for me. I'd have to send the editor all these clips along with instructions. He'd send me drafts that I'd have to download, watch, and take notes on to send back to him before we'd have a final version that was ready to be uploaded. It's tough to manage schedules for multiple people on a team, and I'm okay working 12 to 14 hours in a row on my own projects to meet a deadline, but I can't expect someone else to do the same. After the audio track and clips are synced up, we're done with the bulk of the video. We just need to shoot the intro and outro, and then add a few bells and whistles, like graphics and music. The day is Wednesday, this vlog we're working on is long enough, so I don't want to make people sit through an intro, I just film an outro that I'll add later. You may notice that this is the only time I use an actual camera. Everything I film during the poker session is shot on my phone. The intro outro recordings don't often take that long unless there's a lot of things that I need to promote like meetup games and other special events. For this episode, there are only a couple topics to discuss, but not too many. I need a few takes, then I finally get the perfect one. Good luck on the tables and I'll see you next time. No, fuck. Unfortunately, the program on my computer glitched and didn't record the audio, which occasionally happens, so I have to shoot a few more takes to get it right. I like to do this part in the daytime to get some natural light, and hopefully I won't look quite as tired, even though I've already worked multiple 12-hour days this week. Today will actually be a much longer day because I'm adding the video you're currently watching to the schedule in order to release it at the same time, and I have to assemble all of it once I'm finally done with the actual poker vlog. Now it's time to add the graphics. For this poker session, it's very easy since the majority of the footage of me playing came from the Poker Go stream production, which already has great graphics. There are just a few that I need to add for the portion of the vlog that I played off stream. It takes me less than two hours to finish the graphics, whereas for a normal cash game session that isn't streamed, it's way more difficult and time consuming. Here's a look at what the finished version of Poker Vlog episode 230 looks like that has a typical amount of graphics. All those purple items and other items on the same row or above are all graphics that I had to add. There are generally going to be dozens or hundreds. There's a separate one for each street and each action that a player made. This is the most tedious and boring part of the editing process, but it adds a lot to the video. Again, I'm lucky that I didn't have to do much of it for episode 232. We finished the graphics and it's time for the music. Over the years, I've downloaded hundreds of copyright free songs to my personal library that I'll typically pull from a site like this one called Artlist. I still like to occasionally sift through these sites to try and find some new music. Most of these songs aren't very good, but if you want to monetize your channel, you don't have many great options, you kind of just have to deal with it. I like implementing music. Songs allow me to better convey the feeling that I want the viewer to have while they're watching a vlog. I try to match the mood that I have when I'm playing a hand to the song that you'll hear in the video. Music also helps add some fluidity. It's usually the last part of the video that I'll work on. If I don't have any new music, it only takes me around an hour or two hours to go through my library, pick songs, then add it to the project. Finally, I watched the video all the way through from start to finish so I can catch any mistakes I made while initially editing. When you're working long hours staring at a computer screen all day, you're usually not going to get everything perfect the first time through. I only have to make a few minor adjustments on this one without having to do as many graphics myself. I mostly adjust how everything flows together and some audio levels. The vlog is now done, it's over 40 minutes long, I've worked on it for about 26 hours myself the last 4 days, and my brother worked on it for an additional 2 hours, but we're not quite done. We exported to the computer, this file is over 3 gigabytes, so it takes a little time. Once it finishes exporting, we upload it to YouTube. If I'm traveling for a meetup game or a tournament series and using hotel internet, sometimes this part can take hours. We're at home today, I've upgraded my internet just for this purpose, so it only takes a few minutes is usually when I come up with the title and thumbnail. Lots of people think that I spend a good chunk of time coming up with something catchy, but that's not the case at all. I normally spend less than 10 minutes working on what's called the packaging. Generally, viewers only spend a second or two on YouTube before they decide what they want to watch, so it's definitely very important to create enticing packaging that'll grab a potential viewer's attention, but it's my absolute least favorite aspect of YouTube. I spend 20 plus hours working on an episode each week, then a huge part of what determines the success of a video is something that I spend almost no time at all on in comparison. I put a bunch of tags in there, I'm not really sure if they do anything, it's just another BS step that I don't enjoy much. I make sure that it's monetized so that I can get a return on all the effort, we make sure that it's suitable for ads, then a little after 7pm, we're ready to schedule the release the following morning. 
There's no better feeling as a creator than knowing that you've completed and successfully uploaded a video that hopefully your viewers will enjoy. Documenting my journey on YouTube for almost exactly six years to the day has been life-changing. If you ever decide that you want part of your life documented and that perhaps you can provide something of value or entertainment for others, I strongly encourage that you pick up the camera and start recording. You may not end up with that many subscribers, you may not even get to a point where you can monetize your channel, but I can almost guarantee you that if you give it a shot, regardless of the outcome, you won't regret putting in the effort. That's it for this one, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, I'd appreciate it if you hit the like and subscribe buttons. Helps out the channel a ton. Now you guys know, you know, all the, all the time and effort and the entire process really of putting together a poker vlog. It ends up being a lot of work, but uh, seeing a channel grow over the last six years has been incredibly fun and it's taken my life to places that I, I didn't think was gonna be possible. And, um, you know, I, I, it's made my life way, way more enjoyable as a professional poker player. And um, a lot of opportunities have become available from that, including the partnership with The Lodge in Austin and my partnership with WPT. So if you have any questions or comments, feel free to let me know in the, in the comment section down below. And uh, hope you guys are doing well, staying safe, and good luck at the tables.